County Coliseum, game two of the three-game series between the Angels and the Oakland A's. The A's wearing their pearly white uniforms have taken the field, so let's take a look at the lineup that Mike Sosha is running out there this afternoon. Halos at 65 and 70, remain 10 and a half games back of the Texas Rangers, who lost to the Minnesota Twins last night. Alberto Cayaspa leading things off at third base. Howie Kendrick at second. It's Bobby Abreu in left. Torrey Hunter back in right field. Hideki Matsui's in the lineup. He is serving as the DH. Last 15 games, he has been red hot. Eric Ibar, the shortstop. Juan Rivera is at first base. Jeff Mathis doing the catching with Peter Borges batting ninth and playing center field. Taking on the right-hander Trevor Cahill, who quietly, believe it or not, even at 14 and 6, is going to be talked about as we get a little bit later in the season, assuming he puts up the numbers as far as a potential Cy Young candidate. Anytime you have an ERA under three at 282, then that consistent, only 119 hits allowed in those 159 and two-thirds innings pitch. Very good fastball. You're talking about a great sinking fastball, kind of lateral movement on the fastball times too, 87 to 92, a curveball slider and change up, keeps the ball in the ballpark. Well, defensively behind Cahill, Jeff Larish gets the start in left field. Coco Crisp in center. Rajay Davis is in right. It's Kevin Kuzman off at third with Pennington. And short Mark Ellis in second. Derek Barton at first with Kurt Suzuki doing the catching. Alberto Cayaspo steps in here. Bob Guerin and the A's. Nine games back in the West. Picking up a game on Texas with their win last night. An 8 nothing shutout. In which Gio Gonzalez picked up his 12th win. Scott Kazmir. Took the loss. He's now eight and thirteen. There's a strike, and it's one and one on Alberto Cayaspa. Was in the leadoff spot last night. Went 0 for four. Halo's managing five hits in the game last night. Cahill is a strike throw. He's usually around the plate. Boy, what numbers he has against the AL West? Five and one with an ERA well below two. 1-1-1. One, one, one. That one line right back up the middle. And the Angels get their leadoff man on board. Good piece of hitting there by Alberto Cayaspo. Man on and Howie Kendrick will step to the plate. And I think the approach against Cahill is because he has that sink action on the fastball is to hit the ball right back up the middle. When Meg Sosha told us in Seattle what the approach he wanted out of his hitters. Ground balls, line drives up the middle. Certainly when you need to create some offense, Howie's a good guy to go hit and run with. Hit and run was put on by Mike Sosh, and this fouled off to the right. It's no balls in the strike. Howie was 0 for 3 last night with a couple of strikeouts and a walk. His average of 276 with 10 home runs and 63 runs batted in. Hale, pretty quick to the plate. One, two, six. Has a good move to first base. Three pickoffs already. One ball, one strike. Correct myself. 65 runs batted in. Couldn't read my own handwriting. I don't blame you. Tends to happen. And I'm still a little confused by the fact that Trevor Cahill came out to Jefferson Airplane. That is an odd song. He's pretty young to be coming out with that one for a young guy. Yeah. We are in the Bay Area, however. Yes. <laughs> Kuzminov playing in at third base. Cahill doesn't waste a whole lot of time. The 1 1 pitch is outside. It's 2 and 1. It's the fourth time that Cahill has faced the Angels. Took the loss back on May 16th. That was down at the Big A. The other two stars, he's picked up wins here at the Coliseum, June 10th and July 11th. 2-1 pitch. Now he fouls it off to the right. What you have is two good young pitchers going at it today. Both of them throw across their body. Kale not quite as, as much as Jared Weaver, but that deception, hide the baseball well. Both of them throw a lot of strikes. Well, Kale's not more a uh, strikeout pitcher in, in the same category as Jared Weaver. It's a pitch to contact guy. Full count now on Howie. Cahill is the reigning pitcher of the month for the Oakland Athletics. The month of August. As it was announced prior to the game yesterday.
three two Kiaspo goes and Kendrick takes ball four. Borderline pitch how he takes it two men on with nobody on Bobby Abreu coming up. Today's Angels game as always is presented in wondrous high definition by Time Warner Cable. Wondrous wondrous. As we are here at the wondrous Coliseum. They've done a nice job painting the grass out of straightaway center field no longer looking like spotlights are on the grass. I was going to say that it is a wondrous job. They repaired this field so quickly. It's a lovely shade of Kelly Green. Kayaspo at second, Kendrick at first, Abreu at the plate. Bobby's average down to 252. That takes a breaking ball in for a strike. Bobby last night wore the collar again, 0 for 3. Did pick up a walk in the sixth inning. Now two for his last 30. And that includes 14 strikeouts. Inside. It is one ball, one strike. We were talking about Cahill being the A's pitcher of the month for August. He is coming off a start in which he got lit up by the New York Yankees. His worst start of the year, giving up eight runs, all earned. In four innings. That was game number one of their four game series in which they got swept at Yankee Stadium. Zabreu takes downstairs and it's two balls and a strike. Cahill, as we pointed out, a guy that normally is a strike thrower is working from behind here in the early going. We saw this last night too, however, from Gio Gonzalez. The Angels just could not capitalize. The big thing when you look at Cahill is you got to try to get him up in the strike zone. That sinking fastball, if you swing at that pitch, you're going to hit the ball on the ground a lot. Three balls and a strike here. Torrey Hunter's on deck. Just underway here at the Coliseum with no score. Kayaspa with a base at the center. Kendrick with a walk. Bobby rolling over this one and rolls it foul. So another full count here. Boy, Bobby talking to himself, trying to stay back. He's out in front of that pitch. Exactly what Kale wants the hitters to do again. So get out in front and roll over, hit a ground ball. Bobby's trying to stay back and drive the ball to left center field. Three two count. I wonder if they're going to go here. The left handed batter up. Runners take off and Kayaspo's picked off. Kendrick ends up at second base. Well, that's one of those plays you have to make sure the pitcher's going home. It's easier if it's a left handed pitcher to go there for the right hander with the ability to be able to spin around and make that throw back to second base. And a solid job by Cahill as far as running. Kayaspo back towards second base to try to keep Howie at first, but that didn't work. But still, you cannot be picked off in that spot. That's just bad fundamental baseball. There's no other way to put it. No sense of trying to paint a rosy picture about it. Just a bad, bad mistake. Three two pitches rolled foul. You got first and second with nobody out. You're scuffling to put runs on the board, hitting just over 200 since August the first with men in scoring position. And you get picked off on a spin move. In the first inning. Just can't happen. Especially when you have a young pitcher, even though he's pitching great this year on the ropes against a number three hit in your lineup in Bobby Abreu. And Abreu goes down swing with round number two. So Bobby's struggles continue here. Two outs and Torrey Hunter coming up. Change up. Way out in front. In the dynamics change as far as how aggressive you're going to be on the mound. But a man on second with one out is compared to 3-2 count. Nobody out. Have to go with the fastball. Can't afford to walk a batter. He had an open base at that point. He could throw the change up. 
Torrey takes a breaking ball for a strike. He's hitting 291 on the year, 18 home runs, 70 runs batted in. A one for four night last night that included a base hit. Big lead at second for Howie Kendrick. Here's the 1-1. One -one. Torrey takes inside. Mike Malinsky is calling the balls and strikes this afternoon. Alan Porter at first. The crew chief Tim McClellan at second. Adrian Johnson did a nice job behind the plate last night. He's over at third base. And the 2-1 pitch. Torrey takes outside. Three balls and strikes. Kale, just 22 years of age, former high round pick by the Oakland Athletics, second round in 2006, Oceanside, California. Torrey just let it fly right there. Full count. Very impressive for a young pitcher to be able to throw a breaking pitch 3 1. Torrey sensed that he was going to get a fastball there, was ready to gear it up to hit the fastball. Payoff pitch is outside, ball four. Second walk of the inning for Trevor Cahill. Two on, two outs for Hideki Matsui. We've got the right guy up here in this spot. Be able to drive in some runs in the first inning. Matsui's been very hot of late. Turning on some pitches on the inner half. Patient at the plate. Now the team leader in RBI. Hitting over 400 since August 14th. So he's seen the ball well. Driving with authority. First pitch to Matt Suey is outside. One ball, no strikes. Cahill's been very good here at the Coliseum. 8-2 with a 1.84 ERA. And opponents are sitting 194 against him. And his 11 starts here at home. This being, of course, the 12th. 1-0 pitch. And Suey slices it foul. One ball, one strike. It's a 25-pitch first inning for Trevor Cahill. It's almost you feel like the Angels have to score in this inning. Two walks, a base hit. Didn't score yesterday. Take advantage of a pitcher who right now is not throwing strikes. Kendrick leading off at second. Hunter from first. That's outside. Two and one. Outfield pretty deep for Oakland, including Chris, the speedy center fielder. Grown accustomed over the last couple of weeks watching speed guys in center play, play shallow as Matsui takes down low, three balls in a strike. And again, this is very reminiscent of Gio Gonzalez and Scott Casimir last night, both starters. Really struggling and throwing strikes. Gonzalez eventually settled down, pick up the win. 3-1. This one's on the ground towards second base. Ellis has got it. And Matsui is retired. Unfortunately, the Angels with two on and nobody out. Get nothing out of it. We head to the bottom of the first. Jared Weaver to face the Oakland A's when we return.
Take a look at the lineup for Bob Guerin and the A's. They've got Coco Crisp leading things off in center. Derek Barton is at first base, batting second. Kurt Suzuki doing the catching. Jack Cust at DH, Kevin Guzman off at third. Mark Gallos at second base. Jeff Larish is at left. Rajay Davis gets to start in right field. He was in left last night. And Cliff Pennington, who came on late in the game, is batting ninth and playing shortstop. Taking on the Angels' ace, Jared Weaver. Boy, Jared, 11 and 10 mark. Very good ERA at 3 1 2. 200 punch outs on the season so far, which is tied with King Felix for the lead in Major League Baseball. Only 48 walks allowed, too. Just a great ratio as far as walks to strikeouts for Jared. Very good fastball. 90 91 range good curveball slider solid and an outstanding changeup Chris takes downstairs for ball one Coco last night one for four had an RBI single in the sixth inning Hitting 265 with six home runs 31 runs batted it. He's a guy who spent a couple of stints on the disabled list earlier this year Switch hitter takes a strike here. And it's a count of one ball, one strike. Jared Weaver trying to snap a three game losing streak. Boston, Minnesota, Baltimore. That break pitches in there. And it's one ball, two strikes. Although that Baltimore game, not much he could do. He gave up one run in eight innings, struck out 11, walked one. Five times this year, he's struck out at least 11 in a ball game. And fastball missing down and in. It's two balls, two strikes. Give up four runs in his six innings against the Twins, six runs in his five innings against the Red Sox. His last win coming on August the 6th. That was against the Tigers. Chris goes down swing. That is strikeout number 201 on the season for Jared Weaver. The first out here, the first. And we'll take a look at the defense behind Jared. Bobby Abreu is in left. Peter Borges in center. Tory Hunter. In right field. In the infield, you've got Kayasco and Ibar on the left side, Kendrick and Rivera on the right side, but Jeff Mathis doing the catch. Peter Borges in center field going to cover a lot of ground. The day game here, the Coliseum, the baseball, like the Big A, will carry better during the day. And of course, Jerry Weaver, more of a fly ball, strikeout type pitcher. So he'll be busy. Barton takes down low for ball one. Barton hitting 281 this year. Eight home runs, 47 runs batted in. Went over four. But did draw a walk and score the first run of last night's game coming in the first inning as he rips one out toward the shallow right field. Torrey will play this one on the hop. And it's a one out base hit for Derek Barton. Looked like a little top spin lob out to right field while dropping down in front of Torrey. Betting in the third so the man is on board here the against Weaver. Now will bring up the catcher, Kurt Suzuki. Suzuki. Barton is a guy that has had some success against her, not particularly for the batting average, but has a couple big flies against the two home runs. Got to pitch up to be able to hit that in the right field for a base hit. Suzuki takes it inside for ball one. Well, you probably know what's going through Jared Weaver's mind is that top of the first inning unfolded. Two on, but nobody out. Got nothing out of it. Base running faux pas by Alberto Cayasco. Kind of set the tone for the rest of that inning. As Suzuki takes down it away. It's two balls and no strikes. Jared Weaver has been supported with all of 25 runs in his last 13 starts. It's under two runs per game. We mentioned that last game he went eight innings, only one earned run allowed, and he takes the loss. Just two, uh, three starts before that against Kansas City, he gave up one run in eight innings. He got a no decision. This one off the end of the bat. What a weird spin. It goes to Howie Kendrick. They're still going to get the out at first. That ball off the end of the bat, and it shot to the right of Juan Rivera. Nice job. I think he got a. A piece of it with his, with his bare hand. Bare hand, the old 3-4-3. Three, three. Yeah. For the one put out. <laughs> that doesn't happen all that often. Boy, pulled off that pitch. 
weird spin. It spun away from him and then reacted and used the bare hand to knock it down. And fortunately, it went right to Howie, who had the presence of mind to field it and throw in the first. There are two outs with Barton moving on to second base. Jack Cuss, the DH, coming up. It's the old saying you go to a ball game, you see something different every day. I haven't quite seen that one too often. I don't think Juan has seen that too often <laughs> either. Limited time at first base as Cuss takes down low for ball one. Just to finish up on the waiver and the lack of run support, the Angels have been shut out in his last three starts. That made you feel real good at the top of the first two and missed an opportunity like that. But the reality is, hey, I've talked to him a number of times. All pitchers go through these spurts where you don't get a lot of run support. You just have to become almost, not say selfish, but you got to take the lines of going as deep as in the game as possible, throw up as many zeros as possible, right. and think in terms of strikeouts, innings pitch, and low ERA during the course of the game, and, and hope you score enough runs to win. One one pitch. Missed inside. Two balls and a strike. The start of the day, Jared tied for first in strikeouts. Major League Baseball with Felix Hernandez now with 201. Seventh in ERA. Pitches downstairs. Three balls in a strike. Jared sixth in innings pitched. I've been coming to this one with 182 frames locked down so far. He's really done a nice job against the opposition as far as batting average is concerned. He is third in the American League with a 221 batting average against. This is the team that you can put up some, some zeros on. Oakland's been scuffling of late. The eight run scored last night, notwithstanding. I think if you have the ability to change speeds against their hitters and not get into fastball counts, you could be very effective against them. Yeah. So right there, slow curveball at 69 miles an hour on a 3-1 pitch. The 3-2. Cuss rips one out to right field. That's going to fall for base hit. Barton's being waved around. Here comes a throw from Torrey Hunter. It is up the line. Barton scores, and Oakland is up 1-0. Torrey gets more acclimated with that right field position. We've seen a number of his throws off the third baseline. It's a different throw than it would be at center field. Charge it well. It looks like he had an odd bounce at the very end. You see how it bounces high on him. That throw once again up the third baseline. It's a different throw. It takes some time before Torrey gets acclimated and starts making that consistent throw to the plate. Now we've saw that from Torrey. We've seen it for a number of years from center field. He, he has... Pretty good motion. Two seam fastball type of motion with the ball tails on him. From our vantage point, you can see a lot better coming in from center field because it's more of a straight up shot for us. It's almost as if for Torrey from right field, his aim has got to be in the left handed batter's box so that it tails back towards the plate. Exactly, because from center field, you see the throw come right over the mound, and then it works its way towards the third base side of the plate. That's going right into the runner. Better opportunity to throw him out, but you're right. From right field, though, if we start that same type of angle, it's going to go further up the third base line. It makes it more difficult for the catcher to come back and try to make a tag. Got to throw right to the right of home plate in the left hander's batter's box and, ha and trust that movement to get to that spot where you can make that close play at the plate. And through it all, as you pointed out, that big hop, horrible playing surface here in Oakland. Excuse me. Uh, Checked his swing. Adrian Johnson, pardon me, Alan Porter at first base says he did, did not go. So it's one and two. Fortunately, Torrey was able to get a glove on that ball. I don't know about you, I've seen some unbelievably bad hops, usually in September here at the Coliseum because of the football. Raiders getting the job done. Here's the runner goes, throw down and cussed. It doesn't matter. It's a call strike three. So 
Kind of a delayed call there. I think Guzmanoff was kind of surprised there. Two strikeouts in the inning, but Oakland strikes first. They lead it 1 0. Superstores of Angels Baseball. Nobody beats Howard's by the fastest growing car company in America, Hyundai, and by Shakey's Pizza. What's the most home runs hit by one player in a single major league game? Go to Shakey's.com slash trivia. Oakland got a run in the bottom of the first inning on a couple of hits, even though Jared Weaver picked up two strikeouts. But it's the Athletics leading it 1-0 as we start the top of the second inning. Ibar Rivera and Mathis here in the second Against Trevor Cahill, who struggled with his control, two walks, the base hit allowed, and nothing on the board for the Angels. And we were talking about too the struggles that this ball club has had since really the first of August. As Ibar shows button takes a strike. The Angels have been shut out for the last 11 games, and since August the first, a 2.02 average with men in scoring positions. Ibar lines up back toward the middle. This one is played easily by Pennington. There's out number one. As a matter of fact, the Angels have totaled 11 runs in the last seven games. Heading in the seventh position. And when you think about it, the majority of those runs scored up in Seattle were via the home run. Five home runs in that game. So it's what you can do with runners in scoring position as far as putting in place situational hit and getting that key base hit to be able to get some runs across and, and allow the pitchers be more aggressive on the hill. Juan Rivera, the one ball, no strike count. He got to start in right field last night. Instead of going two for four. Takes out shot. It's two balls and no strikes. But Cahill maintaining with his theme of pitching from behind here. It's a young man who got over 170 innings under his belt last year as a 21 year old rookie. Now just north of 160. I think his 25th start. Rivera pops it up. Pennington calls off Kuzminov battling the sunshine. And around the 15 yard line makes the catch. Round number two. Take a look at our Hyundai keys to the game. Well, you got to try to get Cahill to elevate that fastball. When it's up in the strike zone, it's a fairly straight fastball, not overpowering. So you can drive. He's given up 15 home runs. The key is to get that fastball up. If he gets you to start swinging at that sinking fastball or even his change up down in the strike zone, it's going to be very difficult to center up that baseball and do some damage. Jeff Mathis takes outside for ball one. Mathis hitting 193 with three home runs and 14 runs batted in. Jeff played Tuesday up in Seattle. But 0 for 3 in that game. 
Here comes the 1-1. One -one. This one cued right back to Cahill. And the right-hander has himself a 1-2-3 shutdown inning. We head to the bottom of the second here at the Coliseum with Oakland leading it one to nothing. more than ever the smart choice is Carmax by Carl's Jr. Want a charbroiled burger top of the big juicy Philly cheesesteak? Then come to Carl's Jr. for the Philly cheesesteak burger and buy Hawaiian Gardens Casino. Get your game on. Beautiful downtown Oakland. Just up the road from Oakland, Alameda County Coliseum. one nothing. A's leading the Angels. Jared Weaver out there for the bottom of the second inning. He'll face Ellis Larish and Davis. Derek Barton getting on board with a one-out base hit. He scored on the base hit by Jack Cust. Mark Ellis takes a strike, hitting 260 on the year. Three home runs, 34 runs batted in. Swings tardy on that fastball. And it's no balls and two strikes. Ellis had a couple of hits last night, a single, a double, scored a run. He was also hit by a pitch, one of two batters that Scott Casimir took out in the first inning. That's outside. It's one ball, two strikes. Well, it was an interesting article back in L.A. today with Dan Heron was talking about getting the ability to be able to sit there and watch Jerry Weaver pitch on a consistent basis and wondering how he's able to strike out as many batters. Ibar to his left has got an Ellis is retired for the first out. Talked about the fact is he you know he doesn't have an overpowering fastball like a King Felix 95 to 98 mile an hour fastball, but it's his ability to use all of his pitches. Sinks the fastball. He saw them elevate that fastball against Ellis through that slow curveball at 69. Good slider. He goes, boy, that changeup is one of the better ones he's seen. Both the pitchers, both Dan Heron and Jerry we were both strikeout guys, but they don't possess that. 98 mile an hour fastball. It's about deception and delivery and ability to hit spots. I was just going to say, deception being the key part, especially for Jared Weaver, he throws pretty much across his body. There aren't too many guys in Major League Baseball right now that throw across their body like Jared does. And then Heron, of course, with that delayed motion in his starting windup, with that pause at the top, throw off a timing of a hitter, trying to get position to get the bat hit through the zone but you have that slight delay same thing with Weaver throwing across your body you don't see the baseball till the very end one ball two strikes here on Jeff Lairs the left fielder hitting 225 with a couple of home runs seven runs batted in Larish goes down swinging for round number two third strikeout for Jared but well, just look at it where the hands are for Larish today. It looks like he's going to have a tough time against Jared staying back Setting on that breaking pitch. Very quiet hands, but out in front trying to pull the ball. Keep that slow curve or change up on the outside part of the plate. He's going to swing and miss often. Always taught, too, as a kid, that try not to throw across your body because most guys that do usually suffer arm injuries or fatigue in their shoulders. 
It's work for Weaver. That pitch is way outside on Rajay Davis. One guy that always comes to mind is Darren Dreifer that the Dodgers threw across his body. He was always concerned about elbow issues. And, of course, he did have a couple Tommy John surgeries as far as ligament replacement in that elbow. But I'll tell you, when he was healthy, Davis it gets. Gets a fair ball to wide. He's got good speed, and he'll roll into second base with a two-out double. It's 24th of the year. Talking about Darren Dreifer, all I can think of with the arm injury is shocker. Which is all state shocker. <laughs> <laughs> I always think about that. He was he used to crush the baseball yeah. at Wichita State. He's one of the few guys that ever hit that glove at AT&T Park in San Francisco during batting practice. He had some pop. Well, he had a heavy sinking fastball too. Kevin Brown liked sinking fastball. Surprised he didn't stick around or try to make a comeback. He tried, believe Mike me. Mike Hampton. Yeah, he's back. It's amazing. Can you believe that? Quick throw to second base. And Davis is back. Would you have ever thought that Mike Hampton, number one, was under contract with anybody at this point? No. He still might be under contract for the Rockies. Who that, maybe that's why he's still trying to go. Send that huge contract. So he's just making the minimum from the Diamondbacks. <laughs> Could be. This one out to center field. There's a base hit. Davis going to be waved around. The throw for Peter Borges seems to be on line. It's cut off by Rivera. And Pennington will make the third out. But Jared Weaver giving up two. Two out hits. A double by Davis. A base hit by Pennington. And the A's have doubled up. Two of the books. Oakland leads it two to nothing. down by the score of two to nothing want to remind you that one week from tonight all kids two to 18 in attendance will receive a free angels art set courtesy of your colt the set includes crayons colored pencils markers watercolors and more so be sure to purchase your tickets today at angelsbaseball.com or any of the angels stadium ticket windows cannot wait for that one it's the first giveaway although you were pretty excited for the autotrader.com candy jar that was Which, by good. the way, is filled with peanut m and Wait oh, our man. arrival back at the Big A on Monday. Not an Angel fan sent some peanut M&Ms. They were incredible. We got enough for about three years, maybe. <laughs> I hope they stay fresh. I think we'll find a way to keep them fresh. 9-1-2 and two for the Halos here in the third inning. Against Trevor Cahill has a strikeout and two walks. Peter Borges hitting 200 with couple of home runs and seven runs batted in. Had a one for three night last night. Lays off the breaking pitch and it's two balls in the strike. Peter had a pretty good throw in from center field on that base hit by Pennington. In a normal situation, I'd like to have seen how that ball would have arrived at the plate with the speedy Rajay Davis trucking home from second base. It wasn't it really easy. a nice job of cutting it off. So it was the out. It wasn't real easy for Borges to catch that baseball. It had three or four different directions. It was bouncing on the way out to him. Charged it well. About as well as you can do under the circumstance with the outfield. 
This one rolled up the line and it's foul. Go back and take a look at that base hit off the bat of Cliff Pennington. Watch that ball out in the outfield. See, he's got to wait. He's not able to come in quite as aggressively because there was a couple different bounces, but that was a strong throw. Yep. Right. And that's line. a throw that we talked about with Tori. It's going to work its way right, right towards third base side of home plate where the runner's going to be coming in at the same time. Another 2 2. Borges takes that one in the dirt. Full count. Really don't recall Cahill throwing as many pitches as he has here in the early going, working so many deep counts as Borges chops one right back to the youngster. Almost throws it away going to first base, but Borges is retired for the first out. With three ground balls or line drives back up the middle, Adam Hardy. Anytime you're a single ball pitcher, you're going to have to field your position well. A lot of pitches on the outer half of the plate, and if a batter stays back with his hands, he's going to hit some ground balls back up the middle. He's been active already in the game. Well, since walking Torrey Hunter in the first inning, he's retired the last five in a row. Four of which have come via the ground ball, the other one a pop up by Juan Rivera. Kayaspo takes a strike here. The second plate appearance had a base hit in the first. And it was picked off. Two fastball upstairs, one ball, two strikes. Not a bad crowd here for a Saturday afternoon on a beautiful day. Cool this morning and overcast, but this side of the bay, the sun comes down, all of a sudden things warm up. Well, it was kind of chilly over in San Francisco at the hotel. It's perfect here today. It's fouled down the left field line and out of play. It's a full count still. Nothing like having some fried dough sprinkled with sugar. It's very good. It is the healthy alternative. Yep. On the ground a second. Ellis has got it on two hops. There's out number two. And just like Gonzalez, who started getting in cruise control after struggling with the command of the strike zone early in the game. The Angels didn't take advantage of that. Number one, he throws six shutout innings. Cahill now getting that ground ball working. Now he drew a walk in the first inning, so no official at bat for him. Cahill's first pitch bounced up the middle. Ellis deep to his right. Throw to first and safe at first base. Barton coming off the bag to throw just a little bit high. Should be an infield base hit for Howie. I was looking for a moment there that Barton was kind of undecided as to whether or not to stay on the bag or come off the bag and try to swipe tag. And that's the thing, that's that slight indecision that cost him. A good range there for Ellis, but a high throw. Oh, he runs too well. Speaking of that, now with 11 stone bases on the season, got to think in the lines, you got to be aggressive. Bray who takes a strike. He's a strikeout victim of the first inning. So he's 0 for 1. The only punch out for Cahill. Not really a strikeout guy. 91 punch outs now of the year with 50 walks allowed. And 
will leave it a count of one ball, one strike. Two and one. The base hit by Howie, the infield base hit, just his second hit of this road trip. Two for 16 through Seattle. Uh, the first game plus here at Oakland. There goes Kendrick. Two one pitches inside to throw down. It's not a time, but still a base. So man in scoring position here for Bobby. We can pick, pick a pretty good pitch to go on, too. On Howard's replay, it was an all-speed pitch, and Howie Kinnick was able to get a good jump. Easily gets into second base, scoring position. Change up. Not only was the velocity not quite as quick, obviously, as the fastball, but location where you have Suzuki reaching back. Bobby takes down low, and there's a walk. So two on, two outs for Torrey Hunter. Torrey still looking for an RBI to get north of 71 on the season. He's got 20 consecutive games without an RBI, the second longest stretch of his career. With 22 games once. That was back in 2000. Takes outside the ball one. Matter of fact, Torrey's last RBIs came in the first inning of the game at Comerica Park on August the 6th. With a two run home run in that first inning. That was his 18th home run and picked up his 69th and 70th RBIs. And right now, Torrey's going to have a position to be able to drive a baseball because. Hale's having a tough time commanding the strike zone with his fastball. Already at this next pitch will be number 60 here in the third inning. Kurt Young, the pitching coach for the A's, is going to go out and talk to him, try to settle him down. He's seems like he's trying to throw to the outside corner too often, and it's not getting that running action back on the corner. And he does have a good sinking fastball, but most of his movement is lateral movement on the fastball. So if you can center that baseball when it's above the knee level, you can crush it. But if you swing when it's down in the strike zone, it's very difficult to get any elevation against them. Two zero pitch. Outside, three balls and no strikes. Well, Through it all, even though he's. Homerless and RBI list since August the sixth inning. August the sixth inning. Where'd that come from? There's a random thought. Well, the, the Angels will be up by six to two with that <laughs> inning. <laughs> Where did that come from? <laughs> Torrey takes a strike at three and one. <laughs> Jefferson's starship still going on. <laughs> oh man. Well, I'm finally rolling into September and just start saying stuff. <laughs> Takes inside, it's ball four. They are loaded up. What I was going to say was the fact that he has not stopped hitting. He was the Angels' best hitter as far as average is concerned in the month of August, even though he's not picked up an RBI or home run since the sixth. Now batting the designated hitter at number 55. But he's picked up two walks Hideki in this Matsui. game. They're loaded up now for Deki Matsui. Showing some pace and tracking the baseball. That's the important thing for him. Eventually, those RBIs will start going. He's a guy that's very streaky as far as home runs and RBI. Matsui's 0 for 1, grounded out to second base in his first plate appearance. Cahill will work from the stretch. Kendrick at third, Abreu at second, Hunter at first. Decky takes down low. Cahill already four walks, one strikeout in this game. The 
four walks already in this game, matching a season high for him in a ball game. Matsui out towards center, but playable for Chris as he backs up now. He'll make the catch for the third out. The Angels load him up against Cahill, leave him loaded. We have Lovato the third open, up to nothing. Some good looking hats right there. <laughs> hey, on Sunday, September the 12th, join the Angels for the annual Salute to Kids Day. Upon entry, all kids 2 to 18 in tennis will receive a free Angels reminder binder courtesy of Union Bank to participate or to purchase tickets, as well as for more information on Salute to Kids Day, visit angelsbaseball.com. And we salute those lids. It's kind of hat you would wear in August the sixth inning. <laughs> oh, <No> quick. <question. laughs> <laughs> what is it? That's a rally monkey, isn't it? <laughs> that's a, that's, oh, a that's quite comfortable, too. <laughs> You're good to take the Bart back with that on. <laughs> <laughs> Top of the order, Coco Crisp takes down low for ball one. Chris, Barton, and Suzuki here against Jared Weaver. We just saw his teammates load the bases up against Trevor Cahill and get nothing out of it. Good off speed pitch there, and it's one ball, one strike. Chris, the strikeout victim of the first inning, one of three punch outs for Weaver. So Coco, 0 for 1. As we look at the scoreboard, too, Texas losing to Minnesota. Colby Lewis getting up five runs in the first inning. The Twins leading that game 5 0 in the third. Two balls, two strikes. Well, Coco Chris frustrated the pitch before that slow curveball from Jared Weaver. Now this one for 15 in his career against Jared. Full count. Weaver's allowed four hits in this game, two each in the first two innings. The payoff pitch to Coco is cued back to the screen. We'll reset and do it again. I'm sure he'd like to have that second inning back in which he gave up the double, the bloop double down the left field line off the bat of Rajay Davis. And then an RBI base hit by Cliff Pennington to straightaway center field. Long conversation on the mound here. Kind of odd, especially with the infielders running in. The two strikes on the batter. Payoff pitch it's inside at ball four. Batting. 
Do you think that's possibly a, a sign of maybe the infielders picking up something, maybe a sign being relayed or location? Could be. Otherwise, they want to be able to look in and be able to relay to each other in the infield what pitch Jarrett's throwing if they're changing signs. Jeff Mathis behind the plate. That way they could be positioned if it's going to be a slow break and pitch play in the hole or play down the line more often than normal instead of a fastball. Got to pay attention with Coco Crisp over at first base. He will run 14 for his last 14 in stolen bases. Second lock and streak since Ricky had a streak of 15 for 15 back in 1998. Jerry with three pickoffs on the season. Very quick pickoff move. Barton takes outside for ball one. He had a base at the right field and scored the first run of the first. There's no doubt Coco is going to try at some point during this sequence of pitches to Barton to try to steal a base. There he goes. Barton takes a strike to throw down for Mathis. Not in time. And a man in scoring position here with nobody out in the third. 25th stolen base against Jared. Four would be base throws have been caught. Pretty good jump. And Jared being tall and thrown across his body. He's going to have times around 1 3 5 to 1 4 as far as delivery to the plate. And then there's been, always been a lot of really good pitchers that weren't particularly quick to the plate. Greg Maddox, Nolan Ryan, guys like that. Dwight Gooden wasn't real quick to the plate also. He didn't have many base runners. One and two now here on Barton. Kurt Suzuki, the catcher's on deck. Nice job by Mathis. That ball bouncing out in front of the plate. Keeping Coco at second base. On a replay, off speed pitch. Nice job. Mathis squaring up his body, keeping it in front of him to make sure the Chris could get into third base with no outs. The trust you have as a pitcher with a catcher behind the plate that can block your breaking pitches in the dirt is very important. Barton lays off the off speed. It's a full count. Three two, he lost him. So Weaver with back-to-back -back walks to start the third inning. Mike Butcher's going to come out, pay a visit. That comes down to the residual of being shut out. When you've been on the hill three straight times. He's trying to make that perfect pitch. And it seems to be that Martin saw the ball pretty well because there was a couple tough pitches there that he did not chase it out of the strike zone against him. Coco Crisp, ever since he stole second base, got something in his eye, apparently. Heading back to the bag. Butcher's back in the dugout. Here's Kurt Suzuki with nobody out. Runners are first and second here. Oakland with solo runs in the first two innings. Suzuki grounded out of the first inning. That was that ball he hit off the end of the bat that kind of shot off the hand of Juan Rivera and ricocheted perfectly to Howie Kendrick. 
He'll look at a strike. I certainly wouldn't think with Suzuki, the number three hitter in the order for the A's, the possibility of a sacrifice. But he's not your prototypical number three hitter, but it'd more likely be swinging away. Spin move, trying to make sure that Chris stays close to the back at second. Same with Barton at first. Outfield not very deep. Matter of fact, Torrey cheating in a couple of steps in right field now. Here comes the 0 1. Suzuki rolls this one over to third. Kayaspo feeds. Howie for one. The relays in time for double play as Chris ends up at third base. There are two outs. Real good pitch by Jared in that spot. Needing a double play ball. Can't far, fall further behind in this game, especially with Cahill on the hill for the A's. It's a nice ground ball. Kayaspo turns it very well. In the outer half of the plate, Suzuki tries to pull it. Result a 5 4 3 double play. Quick turn by Howie. So, two outs now as Jack Cuss steps to the plate. He had an RBI base hit that came in the first inning. Picking up his 38th run batted in. Jared stepping off there, wanting Mathis to run through the signs again. Going for the full windup with Crisp at third base and two outs. No balls and a strike. Making sure he glances over at Coco Crisp just in case he's thinking about trying to steal home. One ball, one strike on Cust, who last year led the Athletics at home runs with 25, walks with 93, strikeouts with 185. And he did that for the third consecutive season, yet wasn't good enough to make the team this year. Sit down to the minor leagues, recalled on May 15th. Taps this one found. It's one ball, two strikes. Good numbers down at AAA before getting called up. Definitely gave you a professional at bat. Good power, real good power, even a left center field. The base hit he got with the man at scoring position in the first inning. Just his third hit in the last 33 at bats with a man at scoring position. Overall, a 182 hitter in that situation for the season. As he takes upstairs, and it is two and two. That's the second lowest average in the American League. Russell Brandon hitting 160 with men in scoring position. He of the Seattle Mariners. 2 2. A full count. Here comes a payoff pitch to Jack Cuss. He'll take a cold strike three on the inside corner. Down he goes. Strikeout number four for Weaver. We are through three. Hayes up to nothing.
Time for our AT&T trivia question. Name the last Oakland Athletics pitcher to have 200 strikeouts in a season. Well, it's easy to go with Dave Stewart. Go beyond that plate of blue. I'm going to go with Mike Horn. How about Mike Norris? Well, he's a th he threw a ton of innings. Yeah, he did. When Billy Martin was managing this ball club. Yeah. Ibar Rivera Mathis here against Cahill in the fourth inning. And Eric takes a strike. Ibar takes strike two. He's 0 for 1 with the ground ball to short, leading off the second inning. One two pitch on its way and Ibar rolls it up the first base line. Barton has to slow down there. That ball checked back to his right. Nice play to stick with and Ibar's retired for the first out. It's twice today we see the first baseman have a tough time making the play on the ground ball. Has to go back. He's going right down to the first baseline and then reach back to make that play. So Juan Rivera had to use his bare hand to deflect the one ground ball over to Howie to get that out at first early in the game for the Angels. So here's Rivera with one out, nobody on. Juan popped out to Cliff Pennington in shallow left. Second inning AB. Swings here and hits a sharp ground ball to second. Rivera on one pitch is retired for round number two. Seven ground ball outs for Cahill in this game. Only one strikeout, four walks. An unusual line score. Kale so far, but the bottom line is no runs allowed. The Angels no runs with two hits, no errors, and they've stranded five against Cahill. Oakland two runs on four hits, no errors, and they've left three on base against Jared. Halo's 0 for 3 with man in scoring position. Jeff Mathis hit a bouncer back to Cahill in the second inning, so he's 0 for 1. When you look at that score in Minnesota now, Minnesota up 6 to nothing on the Rangers. Well, they've definitely left the door open for the Angels to make a run at them, but if you're not winning games, it really doesn't matter. Now one hit out to straightaway center field. Chris playing deep will track it down. But Cahill has his second one, two, three inning. We head to the bottom of the fourth inning here at the Coliseum with Oakland leading it two to nothing.
Gaffney, the last Oakland Athletics pitcher to have two strikeouts, 200 strikeouts in a season. And the answer is Jerry Zito, 205 punch outs in 2001. A big, big curveball, Barry Zito. A little bit more effective in 2001 than he has been of late with the San Francisco Giants. Scuffled again last night, did Zito. Well, he had some good pitching at that particular point, Oakland here, as they do now. And that was the year before he won the Cy Young, wanted to know too. As Kuzminov swings the first pitch and pops it up. Ibar going out there, Borges is coming in, and Ibar will make the catch battling the sunshine. The first out. And Zito in that 2001 year won 17 games. Number 14, Mark Ellis. Boy, Eric Ibar looked like the only one who could see that baseball. Poor just tough time picking it up. Still looking up into the sky. Mark Ellis 0 for 1 with a ground ball to short. Pitch is down low, and it's one ball, one strike. I just went back and looked at that 01 Oakland A's team. 102 and 60 finish. They still had Hudson. Zito, Mulder. That's a pretty good threesome. Yeah. They were three good young pitchers that threw a lot of strikes and above average stuff. Hudson was 25 that year, Zito and Mulder 23. Oh. First base side, Juan Rivera flips the glasses down, makes the catch, two outs. Corey Lytle was on that team. Gil Heredia. Eric Hilgis. Well, didn't give up many runs. No. Managed by. Art Howe. Art Howe. That's right. Really nice guy. Very nice guy. Yeah. Jeff Larish takes outside, and it's one ball, no strikes. He hasn't hooked up anywhere, has he, since he was let go by the Rangers? I don't think so. Bench coach for Ron Washington, first year. Great baseball man. Very good baseball player, also. One one. Player takes outside. He was a strikeout victim in the second, one of four. Punch outs for Weaver. Trying to return the favor here and get his first one, two, three inning. Since you were talking about in that first inning at bat, off speed pitch, Larish all geared up for the inside part of the plate. But this doesn't have that plate coverage to be able to get a pitch on the outer half, especially one that's off speed, whether it's that curveball or his changeup. Two balls, two strikes. The pitch. Down low, full count. Rajay Davis on deck. Oakland with a run in the first inning on two hits, a run in the second inning on two hits. The only scoring thus far. Payoff pitch. Lairs takes inside, ball four. They lost him. Third walk issued by Jared. Puts the man on with two away, and Rajay Davis coming to the plate. When Jared not real happy with himself, too, had a position to be able to get 
Larry Shout and have that one, two, three inning. Davis with that double down the left field line. Came around to score in the second inning. No balls in the strike. Davis has been a nice little pickup for the Oakland Athletics. Let's see, plucked him off waivers in April of 2008. Courtesy of the San Francisco Giants. I'm sure the Giants could have used his 305 average that he, that he had last year with three home runs and 48 runs batted in. Stole 41 bases. Back to back 40 or more stolen bases in a year for Davis. Career 252 hitter in the National League, a career 290 hitter in the big leagues prior to this year. 268 this season. Tremendous speed if he can put it in play. He's very dangerous. He can expand the strike zone against him to get on the swing and miss. Good fastball there. Even to count of two balls, two strikes. With the University of Connecticut at Avery Point. Good Rajay Davis. Grew up in New London, Connecticut. Well, not, not a lot of baseball played for a long period of time up in that part of the country. Pretty cold. Played the three major sports in high school. That throw. Apparently gets away from Rivera and Jeff Larish is hurt. Uh, if you recall, last week it was Juan Rivera at first base when Julio Lugo dove back into the base. Rivera either did not see the baseball or there was too much movement on it. Remember, Lugo got drilled in the head and had to be taken out of the game. This one getting Larish more on the back. Well, he got him flush. Back, maybe the upper part of his back by his shoulder area. I may have gotten them in the in the buttocks. Fortunately, they didn't even get a chance <laughs> to advance at least. There's appears to be all right. That's my best Forrest Gump. Sorry. Where'd he go? Run, Forrest. Run. <laughs> Juan apparently still getting used to playing first base. Seeing the throw come over the upper 80s. Especially because everyone's different as far as their throw over there with movement. He's, he's going to have to get. A little quicker. That glove to be able to knock that throw down. That wasn't that bad of a throw again. Two two. Davis pops it up to shallow right. How are we going out? Torrey calls him off. That will end the inning. No runs, no hits. A man left on. We are through for here at the Coliseum. Oakland still up two nothing.
think Oakland, the Angels Friends and Family Fun Pack presented by Jeff Blue lets you enjoy four game tickets, four hot dogs, and four soft drinks for just $44. The next two Friends and Family Fun Pack games are Tuesday, September the 7th, and Sunday, September the 12th. Purchase your family fun pack today at angelsbaseball.com. Still plenty of Angel fans here. And a beautiful day for baseball here at the Coliseum. Trying to see the Angels try to score some runs and figure out Trevor Cahill as they trail it 2 nothing here in the fifth. It'll be Peter Borges, Alberto Cayaspo, and Howie Kendrick to face the right-hander. Cahill's walked still, four today. Yeah, he's thrown 73 pitches, 37 out of the strike zone, only 36 strikes so far, yet no runs allowed. Peter Borges, 0 for 1, had a tapper back to Cahill. That happened in his third inning at bat. Swings through that one. It's one ball, two strikes. That big breaking pitch from Cahill. Who actually gets... On top of that pitch, pretty good for a guy who is three quarters. Gets more of that 12 6 type of break. You wouldn't think he'd be able to get there because of where that arm angle is at. But you wonder, as a hitter, if you'd be able to detect something different because of an arm angle different from the curveball and fastball, that you could make an adjustment. And by the way, just went back to the book. It was Lugo on August 29th with Jared Weaver on the mound. So maybe a little bit more difficult for Juan to see the ball coming from Jared on a pickoff attempt. Borges takes a called strike three to strike the fifth. Jared is extremely quick with his pickoff move. Quick footwork. How about third baseman? Yeah, number 12. Number when 12, he's delivering the ball to home, he's not the fastest guy because he's got thrown across his body, got some arm action going, but his move to first. It's about as good as any right-handed move you're going to see in the American League. Alberto Cayasco takes a strike. He's one for two today. He had a base hit in the first inning. Grounded out in the third. The Angels wasting a golden opportunity in the first inning against Cahill. To allow the first two to get on us. Cayasco flips this one into center field for a one-out base hit. His second hit of the game. The Halos hit first and second with nobody out. And a 3 2 count on Bobby Abreu when Tiasco got picked off. In the spin move. That was out number one. Abreu then struck out. Torrey drew a walk. Then Matsui grounded out with the bases loaded. And from that point forward, aside from that third inning in which Cahill himself got into trouble, walking two men to load him up. He's been pretty good. Similar situation from the last time. Kayaspa got a base hit. Howie came up. Mike Sosha put the hit and run on, although you are behind 2 nothing. Kale's a good guy to put the hit and run on because he's a pitch to contact guy. It's not a strikeout pitcher, so you're always going to put it in play. But a 2 0 count, you got to take that away and give it Howie an opportunity to drive this. See if you get two guys in scoring position. Suzuki out to talk to Cahill. Go back to that first inning. This is the play we were talking about. Kayaspa taking off in the spin move there by Cahill. Got Kayaspa to run down. Ended up being the first out of that inning and kind of thwarted any effort. And one West Bank, one person, one play. Brought to you by One West Bank, one person at a time. Pretty throw to first there. Back safely as Kyle And in reality, is on a 3 2 count, you always got to make sure the pitch is delivered home before you make that attempt to steal or have motion going to either second or third base. Two 0. Now he shoots it foul. Two balls and a strike. Kendrick's got a base hit and a stolen base today. He's also picked up a walk, so he's one for one. Yep, a hit and run count now, 2 1 with one out. So she gave 
Now we had an opportunity to see if he can drive and do some damage on that 2 0 fastball. Two and two. That game at Target Field in Minneapolis has the Twins leading Texas now nine to nothing. Carl Pavano on the hill for Minnesota. The stash is working for him. Two twos fouled back. Well, the Yankees like to look up and see how many wins it. Pavano has had what do you have like a couple wins period for that four year contract the Yankees gave him signed with Cleveland last year and picked up by Minnesota this one on the ground and it's past Ellis in the right field Kiasco rounding second trying to go to third to throw from Davis is not in time originally, but Kiasco comes off the bag and he is called out by Adrian Johnson. Two outs. Boy, a good throw originally, and he's going to be out of third. It's a great inside out approach by Howie. Try to slide around and avoid the tag. He did a good job as far as that. Try to get his hand back in there before Kuzminov applied the tag back at him. So Howie's at first base with two outs. Gray with the play. He was struck out and walks. So he's 0 for 1. Kale throwing a lot of change ups to Bobby Abreu, who's trying to stay back. More geared up to try to hit that fastball middle in now. No one to Abreu. Strike on the inside corner, 0 and 2. And when Bobby's gotten the fastball, he's taken it. You know, Kale throws across his body, difficult to be able to pick up, but a fastball in that spot, that's the pitch you want to drive. Takes another fastball right down the middle. It goes down looking. There is out number three. We head to the bottom of the fifth. Opens up. Two nothing. On Sunday, September the 12th, all kids ages 2 to 18 in attendance will be eligible to win great prizes 
such as autographed Angels merchandise, Disneyland, Knott's Berry Farm, and SeaWorld passes, sport fishing passes, ESPN zone passes, and more. If only I could be a kid 2-18 to 18 on that day and be eligible for this. Great seats still available at angelsbaseball.com or the Angels Stadium ticket window for the Salute to Kids Day on Sunday, September the 12th. Man, I hearken back to my days as a 2-18-year-old. Oh, Around the holiday time, we dress the park up in Halloween gear. A setting up nine one and two. Pennington, Chris, and Barton here against Jared Weaver. Pennington with an RBI base hit in the second inning, so he's one for one. Notching his 38th run batted in. As a matter of fact, he came in late in the game yesterday for Steve Tollison, who got in the start. Pennington drew a walk and hit a two-run home run in the seventh of last night's game. That was that six-run seventh inning. Where Jason Bolger gave up four runs in his one-third of an inning. Brian Stokes gave up two runs in two-thirds of an inning. Turning what was a two-nothing deficit to the eight-nothing loss. Jared at 72 pitches thrown thus far. Four strikeouts, three walks to one pitch. He's down low, three balls in a strike. Clearly frustrated this afternoon as far as his location with his fastball. Three walks. High total for Jared. Only 48 walks and 182 innings pitch coming into this game. Pennington hitting a high fly ball to center. Borges comes in. Now backs up a little bit. Will make the catch for the first down. So leadoff man is retired. Back to the top of the order here in Coco Chris. Coming to the plate. You see the flags blowing here. He hit the Coliseum ever since they built the monstrosity that is Mount Davis in center field for the Oakland Raiders. It changed how this ballpark played, especially with the winds. Oh, there's the lovely look of Mount Davis. It is a spectacular look, isn't it? Oh, yeah. A lot of concrete. Coco swings and misses there. But this used to be a, an unbelievable little facility from the standpoint of at least you had the views of the Oakland Hills out in straightaway center field. It was beautiful during day games here. Coco takes a strike. Showed bunt there, pulled it back. And no balls, two strikes. There's the Oakland Hills. Get that one a little sliver of it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Be able to check them out. Yeah, it's good luck. Thanks, Al. 0 2. Chris fouls it back. The reality of it is, however, is the fact that the Athletics, if they're not going to get a ballpark built here in Oakland or Fremont, since that was the the plan when Lou Wolf took over the Oakland A's. And that has since been squashed. Commissioner Seelig really should just step up and let Oakland go down to San Jose. And it's nice to see Oakland A's fans wanting to keep their ball club here, but it's not going to happen here. If it hasn't already, it's not going to. A little check swing flare over to Kayaspa. There are two outs. And the whole argument, of course, is that San Jose is in the quote unquote territorial rights of the San Francisco Giants. As a matter of fact, they have a minor league affiliate there, there in San Jose, but you know what? In the best interest of baseball, if you're going to have baseball survive here and have two teams, you, you got to help Oakland out somehow. Yeah, that would be a great area for the A's. That would generate some revenue for them to be able to keep some of their good young players around and be able to sign some free agents. Well, we were just talking about Zeter, Zito, Mulder, and Hudson. They've got some good young pitching right now. Cahill, Gio Gonzalez, Brett Anderson, Ben Mazzaro. They've got some good arms in the bullpen. But these guys are already Cahill now in his second year. After next year is going to be arbitration year number one. The vicious cycle is going to continue. And unless you can lock these young guys up for 
you know, pretty good salaries, three or four year deals, they're going to be in trouble to keep them around. Abreu comes charging in, makes the basket catch at the belt. And Jared has his first one, two, three inning. We are through five here at the Coliseum. Oakland still up 2 nothing. Howie going to the 30, the 40, the 50 yard line. He is safe on the stolen base. Great jump against Trevor Cahill. Is how he got himself into scoring position by getting to that 50 yard line. And that was our Coors Light free scan brought to you by Frost Brew, Coors Light. A crucial first down picked up by Howie Kendrick. Right at midfield. Unfortunately, could not advance any further. He was stranded over at third base. That was that third inning in which the Angels had him loaded. With two outs, it could not capitalize. I think they went to the 4-3 defense at that point. Four down linemen to be able to stop him at the 50-yard line. Torrey Hunter to lead things off here. Takes the breaking ball in the dirt. Torrey's drawn two walks today against Trevor Cahill. He's issued four. Now 91 pitches thrown by Cahill. Most he's thrown in any game this season has been 113. So more than likely you're going to see him possibly go one more inning depending on how quick this inning is for him. Not that it's any easier going down to that bullpen of Oakland. has been very effective since the All-Star break in ERA at three. It's fifth time this year in which Cahill has walked four men. It's the most that he has given up in one game. But even with those walks, he's got the outs when he's needed to. So he falls behind here. Three balls in one strike. Torrey, Hideki, and Eric Ibar. Schedule three batters. Halos have managed four hits, as have the Oakland Athletics. Torrey just out in front of that one. Hits that one foul up the first base line. It's a full count. Cahill just taking enough off that fastball. 86 miles an hour to get Torrey out in front of it. And a full count. Talked a lot about that BP style of fastball. Batting practice speed, but hitters aren't used to it. Two hopper to Ellis. And Hunter is tied for the first down. Now it's time for Coors Light. Cold, hard, blast. Hideki on Wednesday here. night. Jason Vargas, a guy that doesn't give up many home runs, a left handed batters, but Hideki. His second home run of that series against the Mariners. Well, he could use a big fly right now. That was a Coors Light cold hard blast. Matsui in the hole at 0 and 1. 0 for 2 today with a ground ball to second. Hit a fly ball to center in the third inning. Takes the off speed pitch down low. Even to count of one ball, one strike. Matsui's had a couple of opportunities in the first and third innings to drive in a run. It's not been able to do so. Fouls this one back. It's one ball, two strikes.
Brad Ziegler's up and loosening. If you recall last night, he got hit in the back with a broken bat. Juan Rivera getting a base hit in the ninth inning, facing Ziegler. Atsui takes inside. Two balls, two strikes. The Angels all of a sudden in a scoreless stretch again. 15 and a third straight. It was a 31 in inning straight before Borges hit that home run to center field in Seattle. Check swing on the 2 2 pitch. Takes the count to three balls and two strikes. Boy, and Jarrett's got to be thinking it's been into the fourth game before the club has scored him a run. Back three straight stars, no run score when he's been pitching in the game or pitching, period. Six shut innings right now. That's who he takes inside. That is ball four. A walk, the fifth issued by Cahill. And a man on board here with one away in the sixth thing. And Eric Ibar stepping to the plate. Eric is 0 for 2 with a ground ball to short and a ground ball to first. And the Angels last scored on the home run by Alberto Cayas in the eighth inning of Wednesday's game. Alberto's 10th of the year. That capped a 4 2 win against Seattle. Now batting for shortstop, Eric Ibar. Kuzman off in on the grass at third base just in case. Ibar yanks this one foul up the first base line. Bar in the hole now with no balls, two strikes. Matt Sue is always a very short lead over at first base. Cahill's 0 2 pitch. Ibar chasing a high fastball around the letters. Down he goes on three pitches for round number two. Eric's struggles to continue. 0 for 3 today. Kale elevated this fastball. You have that ability when you're ahead of the count. And Eric unable to get his hands up and to be able to fight that pitch off. So two outs. Man on for Juan Rivera. Juan swings the first pitch and fouls it off to the right. The Bears 0 for 2 with a pop up and a ground up. Juan last time up swung at the first pitch. Hit a hard ground ball to second base. Attacking at the first pitch this time trying to get a fastball. The 0 1 outside. Cahill now at 107 pitches. Close to the end of the rope. But has a 2 0 lead here in the sixth inning. Jeff Mathis on deck. Pretty good hitters count here for Rivera. Matsui at first. Lays off the breaking pitch. Three balls and a strike. This might be Cahill's last batter. He walks or gives up a base hit. 
to Rivera. He might be done. Next pitch will be 110. Five walks in the game already. And there's a walk. Second of the inning, sixth in the game. Ziegler's ready to go. Matsui moves to second base. Bob Guerin's coming out. I wonder if this is a conversation or a move here. With Cahill at 110 pitches. Mathis 0 for 2 against the right hander. Sometimes you see a manager go out, just want to see what type of reaction you're going to give him before he makes that decision. You might leave him in there. He's going to stay in the ball game. We'll take a look at our Hyundai key to the game. We go back to it. Well, the big thing is try to get him to elevate that fastball up in the strike zone. You, see, you can do some damage if that lateral movement, which goes to the big part of the bat, you can center it and drive it extra base capabilities. And that's what Mathis has got to look for right now. First pitch fastball. He's going to try to throw a strike, get it up in the strike zone, and cover it. Jeff had a comebacker to Cahill in the second and a fly ball to center his last time up. As he takes that break to pitch down and in. One zero pitch. Two balls and no strikes. Outfield straight away gets Mathis. Normal depth. Two and one. Mathis didn't seem to like that call as he glanced back immediately to Mike Malinsky. Two and one. When I was around, letter high, he did get the benefit of the call, Kale. That looked like a pitch that should have been called a ball. Here comes the two one. On the outside corner, two and two. Matsui and Rivera on board via the walks. Two outs here, first and second. And it's a full count with two away. Both runners will be going with the pitch. It's a benefit for the Angels here when you think about it. You got Matsui second and Juan Rivera first. That gives you an opportunity if Mathis does get a ball in the gap, but both runs could score and tie it up. Cahill's ready. Here comes the payoff. Mathis out toward right center field. Hit pretty well, but Chris got a good jump on it. He'll make the catch for the third out. The Angels with a man in scoring position can't cash him in again. Into the bottom of the sixth inning. Oakland's up 2 nothing. Speed internet, home phone, and wireless. 
Visit AT&T.com or call 1-800-PICK-AT&T for details. By your Southern California Ford dealers, where you'll find the new Transit Connect. Check it out at SCFordDealers.com. And by 76 Gasoline. We're on the driver's side. Beautiful Bay Area has not been kind to the Angels. Shut out last night, 8 to nothing at the hands of Oakland. Trevor Cahill, even though he's walked six, he's shutting out the Angels here today. He is done after his six innings. Six walks, four strikeouts, four hits allowed. It's a 2 nothing Oakland lead here in the bottom of the sixth. Hey, he's setting up Suzuki. Custom Kuzman off here against Jared Weaver. Well, if you're Cahill, you got to feel pretty good. One of your worst outings, yet you didn't give up any runs because you walked six guys. Fouled your way through, made some quality pitch when you had to. Suzuki fouling off the first pitch. He's 0 for 2 with a ground out and a double play ball. Jer trying to battle to keep this so a manageable comeback win, especially when you look up and still see Texas down 9 to 3 in the seventh inning, an opportunity to pick up a game if you win this ball game. You ever gone through a stretch as Jared has? Your offense struggling off trying to put runs on the board? A couple times. How frustrating was it? Suzuki swings through that one. It's one and two now. Extremely. Because what it comes down to is, like I said earlier about Jared is trying to put up some zeros, but you, you got to set personal goals. My, my goal was to, at that point, we were struggling offensively in Kansas City. I was, my, my mindset was, I was going to try to lead the league in starts and innings pitched. Anything else, there's nothing I could do about it. I can't control how many wins are, you're going to get by how many runs you're going to get scored for you. But you can control your ability to be deep in the ball game, in which you're going to get a decision one way or the other. Majera with 21 decisions already this year tells you he's pitching deep in the ball games. Count remains at two balls, two strikes. Well, but it's no fun when you got it. every pitch in your in your mind is if you make a mistake, you're going to lose. You never want to be in that situation where, like, if you're CC Sabathia with New York right now, he's with a 19 game winner rate at this point. He's got good numbers, but the reality is if he gives up three or four in the first, he still knows his team's capable of coming back and winning. This one out to the alley in right center field. Borges got a good jump on it. Class is gleaming. He lost it in the sunshine. And Suzuki is in at second base. Well, he looked like at the last second this lost it. He was going in a general direction where the baseball where he read off the bat. Then as he was moving, he lost it in the sunshine. Suzuki gets credit for a double his 15th of the year. Jack Cuss at the plate now. The DH, one for two, had an RBI single in the first inning. Rolls this one over to Rivera. Suzuki advances to third. Weaver gets the first down here in the sixth. Well, the strikeout leader in the in Major League Baseball needs a strikeout here. Definitely a guy that if he makes a quality pitch to, even though Kuzma's been hot of late, you can get that strikeout. Infield in now for the Angels. Kuzma off is 0 for 2. Just went down looking at the first inning, popped out. The first pitch he saw in the fourth. Swing on that first pitch breaking ball. That's no balls in his strike. One ball, one strike. Good spot to miss on if you're Jerry Weaver. Tie him up inside.
2-1 pitch. Cued over to short. Coming home with Suzuki to throw is in time. Mathis trying to run down Suzuki. No contact there. And Kayasco tags out Suzuki for the second out. Boy, that was pretty close to contact with Mathis and Suzuki. Yeah, but close to contact doesn't mean there is contact. And I think Garrett arguing that he impeded the progress of Suzuki coming home, which he did not. He got rid of the baseball and got out of the way. Exactly. You can almost try to force it by putting, you know, making contact with your arm or whatever it's going to be. Once he gets rid of the baseball, got out of the way, never made contact. Suzuki threw his arm at and almost made contact with Mathis. And Weaver looked like perhaps even rolled his ankle on the left foot of Mike Malinsky, the home plate umpire. Tag is definitely applied as Jared's trying to get out of the way himself. So Garrett a little more animated than probably necessary. It wasn't that close of a play. You would think Suzuki would make a big deal out of it if he did make contact. So Butcher goes out to the mound, makes sure that Jared's all right. There are two outs here. Put out going 6 2 5. Kuzminov ends up at second base. This is the play we're talking about. Got rid of it. Boy, that's real close. Well, did the catcher admit it all? Hit Suzuki? If not, there's no contact, so it doesn't matter. It's, it doesn't matter how close you are, as long as there's no contact whatsoever. As a base dealer in that spot, that's what you're taught to try to run into. One of the people in the rundown. Then you're awarded the base if you make contact. And no call from either guy, Adrian Johnson, the third base umpire, or Mike Malinsky, the home plate umpire. There's Mark Ellis. Takes a strike. Ellis 0 for 2 with a ground ball to short and a pop up. And that was an odd play because Jared's coming in and playing home plate. At that point, Juan Rivera's got to come in and just walk him away. But he wasn't in that position. Line right back up the middle. Kuzminov is being waved home. Borges with the bobble. There's no play, and it's 3 nothing. Right back up the middle, of the good approach for Ellis. His board just was getting himself a good throwing position. Might have had a shot at him at home. Instead, another run across for Oakland. Left fielder Jeff Larish at the plate. Left handed Craig Breslow has joined Brad Ziegler down in the bullpen for Oakland. Larish a strikeout and a walk. So he's 0 for 1. Shot to right. Torrey back a couple of steps. That will end the inning, but Oakland gets a run on two hits. They leave a man on through six. A's leading it three to nothing.
when he needed to, he made a quality pitch, a couple fastballs on the inside part of the plate, then elevated against Eric Ibar. Six shutout innings, four punch outs for Trevor Cahill, and that is our Lexus pursuing perfection as Brad Ziegler comes in the game now, the sidewinder who doesn't overpower you, stays down in the strike zone, 83 to 87, curveball and a changeup. It's our in and out, who's in, who's out. Here in the seventh with the Angels down three to nothing. He'll be facing nine, one and two, Borges, Cayaspo, and Howie Kendrick. Gabe Gross is out in right field now. Rajay Davis moves from right over to left. Borges 0 for 2 today. Borges takes a strike. Three. Three pitches. There's out number one to start the seventh. Let's eager. It's all about deception. Especially against right-handed batters, very difficult to be able to pick up location of the pitches against them. Alberto Cayaspa at the plate, he's two for three. Ziegler delivers high. Alberto with a couple of base hits. He's been thrown out twice on the bases, however. The biggest of which we've already pointed out in the first. This one in the air to left. Rajay Davis. There, two outs. I'll bring up Howie Kendrick. Howie with a walk and a couple of singles, so a two for two afternoon. Ziegler worked one scoreless inning last night. One, two, down and in. Two balls, two strikes. Ziegler cut from the Chad Bradford mold. Submarine action. Although Bradford is a little bit lower. This one's fouled off at the first base side. Barton and Suzuki. It's Suzuki making the catch. And there's a one, two, three inning. Seventh inning stretch time at the Coliseum. Oakland's on top three nothing.
right now. Get Jack's really big chicken sandwich combo served with curly fries and a drink for only $3.99 plus tax at participating restaurants. And buy Toyota. Get a great deal on Toyota's full line of hybrid and fuel-efficient vehicles at your Toyota dealer today. Oakland's up 3-0 here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Jared Weaver back out for another inning of action. He'll be facing 8-9-1, Davis Pennington and Crisp. Four strikeouts, three walks for Jared. Rajay Davis takes upstairs. Six hits allowed. Oakland with a run in the first, second, and sixth innings. Davis off the end of the bat, pops it up to Howie Kendrick. There's out number one. Scott Shields is up and loosening for the Angels. And at right field line. I'd like to see Jared have a clean well, inning here. Be able to stay in there and be in position. He has a one, two, three inning. Have the offense respond and score some runs and be in line for a W. Pennington with an RBI base hit and a fly ball to center, a one for two night. Takes a slow curveball in for a strike. We haven't seen that pitch a whole lot today either. Jared Weaver, he struggled with the command of the fastball, but that slow curveball we have not seen. Isn't Whether he's not comfortable with it, sometimes warming up in a bullpen, you don't feel that's going to be an effective pitch for you. Pennington sees three pitches and he goes and sits down. There's out number two, strikeout number five for Jared. Center fielder. Oh, yeah, that slow curveball comes back with that no seam fastball to run on the inside corner. Perfect spot. Coco Crisp, a strikeout, a walk, and a line out. Go for two day. Jared with. 205 punch outs now on the year. One ball, one strike. The Twins crushing the Rangers now, 11 to 3. That game still in the seventh inning. Apparently, Elvis Andrus has left the game due to tightness in his hamstrings. Cliff Lee more than likely to miss his next start. That pitch is in the dirt. It's two balls and one strike. That the Angels just did not put any, anything together to try to make up ground. Oakland with a victory today would move to eight games back. In reality, in this road trip right here where you're playing Seattle, who's been struggling to score runs, and Oakland the same thing, it's not inconceivable to think you can win the, every game in this road trip. It's 6 and 0, oh, and you would have picked up three games on Texas at the very least. Two balls, two strikes. Not only that, the Angels go home to take on the Cleveland Indians. Seattle Mariners come in for three. Go back out on the road, take on Cleveland for three more. They've just not taken advantage. 2-2 two -two is outside, full count. Derek Barton. Is on deck. Jerry tried to go one, two, three here for one of the second time in this game. Payoff pitch. Crisp loops it foul. This one into the seats on the third base side. Chris pops it up behind the plate. Jeff Mathis giving chase. Makes the catch, and it is a 1-2-3 inning for Jared. Seventh complete here at the Coliseum. More than likely done on the afternoon. And walks off the mound, trailing at 3 nothing.
out. Angels with runners at first and second. Nobody out of the first inning. Cayaspo gets picked off on a, a 3-2 count on Bobby Abreu. The Angels got nothing out of that inning as Abreu went down looking. That happened in the fifth inning with a man in scoring position. And this the base hit off the bat of Mark Ellis in the sixth inning, scoring the third run for Oakland. That's where we stand right now, a 3-0 Oakland A's lead. As we start at the top of the eighth inning, a new pitcher on the mound for the A's. It's the left-hander Craig Breslow taking over for Brad Ziegler at a 1-2-3 seventh, including a strikeout. Breslow to face Bobby Abreu, Torrey Hunter, Hideki Matsui. So a couple of left-handers, and that's why Bob Guerin has gone to his left-hander from the pen. And Breslow has got a pretty good fastball, 89-93, and 93, curveball, slider, which he loves to throw against left-handed batters, and a changeup. Bobby takes up and in for ball one. Abreu over two, a couple of strikeouts and a walk. Count even now, one ball, one strike. Now, tomorrow afternoon, the 107 start here at the Coliseum, the finale of this three game set. Irvin Santana going for the Angels. Bobby laces this one foul. And Vin Mazzaro, the right hander, going for Oakland. Russell, the guy with pretty good stuff, 59 and two thirds innings, pits, 60 punch outs. Minnesota hitting 202 against him. 62nd game. Bobby asking for time, and it was granted. In that game in Minnesota, Jim Tomey's hit two home runs against the Texas Rangers. Bobby pulls that one foul up the first baseline. More importantly, He passes Mark McGuire on the all-time home run list with those two bombs. Numbers 583 and 584. It's a lot of big flies. No doubt about it. Hall of Famer for me. No question. Abreu out to left. Davis is there. Puts it away and there's out number one. Hey, Chevrolet has given you a chance to sit in some sweet seats to an upcoming game. To find out more, visit angelsbaseball.com slash Chevy today. Sweet seat winners will be invited to Fan Appreciation Day for a chance to win the official ride of Angels Baseball, a brand new Chevrolet. Jim Tomey now ninth on the all-time list in home runs. I'm just talking to the people last time we were in Minnesota how well he's fit into that clubhouse and how he's just taught the younger players yep. to how to be a professional now too shy of tying Frank Robinson for eighth Torrey takes downstairs two balls and no strikes you gotta believe he's gonna play another year so he's got a great shot at getting 600 oh at, at this point you you have to bring him back Torrey driving one out to deep center field. Crisp is back at the wall and gone. Torrey Hunter puts the Angels on the board with a solo big fly. 19th home run and 71st RBI of the year. And it's been a long time coming for Torrey. His first home run and RBI since August the 6th. When once that ball was off the bat, you just knew that had a great chance of getting out. Centered up perfectly. By Torrey. Right down the heart of the plate. Right there to left center field. I guess the key is just talking about home runs, and Torrey responded. Well, it snaps that string of scoreless innings at 17. That's got to stop. Been the home run ball that's stopped those streaks, that 31-inning streak. 
Stopped by Borges' home run to center field. Matt Zui out to right. Gabe Gross comes in a couple of steps. There are two outs. Base is clear now with two outs. And no the short stop. Eric Ibar is stepping to the plate. Kurt Young, the pitching coach, is going to go out. Kind of curious with Ibar being a switch hitter. And Lest is trying to give Bailey, who's warm up been in the bullpen, some extra time to get ready. Especially with a right handed batter and Juan Rivera on deck. We'll give him some time. Off in a four out save situation. Ibar takes outside for ball one. Eric in this one, 0 for 3, including a strikeout. Listen up the third base line. Kuzman off with a bare hand. Pulls Barton off the bag, and the tag is applied. And there is out number three. Nice effort. Nice play by Kuzman off. Torrey gets the Angels on the board as they trail it three to one. Online shop of the Angels at angelsbaseball.com. You can browse the largest selection of official Angels gear, including the latest apparel, nostalgic memorabilia, and the authentic classics for the whole family. Get your gear from the official source, the angelsbaseball.com shop. Scott Shields has come on here in the bottom of the eighth inning for Jared Weaver. The Halo's down by two. He'll be facing Barton, Suzuki, and Cust. Jared Weaver in this one going seven innings, striking out five, walking three, giving up three earned runs. Quality start. But we'll run that winless string to five games now, five starts since his last win. Oh, with that home run by Torrey Hunter, it's the first run the Angels have scored him in his last four starts. Yep. Barton taps this one foul. The count remains in one ball, two strikes. Scott Shields hasn't pitched since August the 28th. That was against Baltimore, going two innings there, giving up a run. Barton gets the fly ball to center. Borges comes in, shading his knife. Now goes back a little bit. 
to make the catch. And Torrey was right behind him just in case. It's like being a good big brother. He said he's taking him under his wing. Showing him how to play the game. He had to go a long way to back him up. Yeah. That was center field also. Well, the thing of it is, obviously, it's a, a much different angle that he gets to see the baseball than that of center field. And if, if the center fielders, and we've seen Coco Chris take a couple of little hesitant moves on a couple balls out there. If he's tracking it the whole way, Torrey, that is, and he can peek up at the baseball, see what Peter's doing. If he's struggling, he can just continue to track it and make the catch if, ne if necessary. Much better angle for Torrey to go in on that one. Ibar on two hops has got it. And Suzuki is retired for round number two. Go back and take a look at our Jaguar key play for the game. This one involving Cliff Pennington. Boy, after that flare by Rajay Davis with two outs. Pennington base hit up the middle scores Davis. Point giving the A's a 2 0 lead. And the way Kale was throwing the ball, that's a significant run. There's Jack Cuss with two outs and nobody on base. Swings the first pitch. It's a towering shot to left. Bobby is under it. Scott Shields has himself a 1-2-3 inning. We head to the ninth here at the Coliseum. Angels trailing it 3-1. to one. New pitcher on the mound, it's the closer. He's on in relief from Craig Breslow, who gave up a run in his one inning. We'll take a look at our U.S. Marines leaders of the game. The A's pitching a 3.54 staff ERA. That is first in the American League. And this guy on the mound is pretty good. Boy, he's got great stuff. Fastball, which he likes to throw often with movement at 92 to 96. Curveball, slider, and a changeup. A pretty good break on that curveball also. ERA at 147. There's 43 innings pitched, 33 punch outs. So he hit 205 against him. Bailey, the rookie of the year last year in the American League. New Jersey native. Will be facing Rivera Matheson Borges to schedule three here. The bottom third due up for Mike Sosha, the Angels. Reggie Willis has come out to the on deck circle. He would bat in the spot previously occupied by Jeff Mathis. Andrew Bailey, 26 years of age, makes his home at Medford, New Jersey, a sixth round pick in 2006. Had 26 saves last year in his rookie campaign. 1.84 ERA. This is a guy who was a starter in the minor leagues. Up at Dell, midway point at Double A Midland. 
two years ago. As Rivera fouls this one off to the right. It snowballs two strikes. I always think that's a good idea, especially if you're grooming somebody for that role, is to be able to build some arm strength up. By doing that as a starter, you get to throw 80, 90 pitches to be able to get that good velocity on the fastball, command of all your pitches before you fall into that closer role. Juan Rivera 0 for 2. He's popped out, grounded out, and walked. Chops this one foul. Cal remains no balls, two strikes. Nino Evil going deep to his right. Showing some fantastic range. And there's a lot of territory here to show your range off here. That's why it's, it's amazing if you ever can win a batting title. You play your half your games here in, in Oakland. None of those bad swings, foul balls get out of play. Not here. One ball, two strikes. Is that why Carney Lansford just kind of squeezed every ounce of his bat at the plate? So nervous of hitting a foul ball here? <laughs> Probably. Very intense player. This one, on a one hopper over to Ellis. One out. So Reggie will pinch hit here. With one out, nobody on. Mathis ends the day going 0 for 3. Now batting for the Angels, number 77, Reggie Willis. Mike Napoli's come out to the on deck circle. Reggio looking to strike. Oh, Minnesota finishing off Texas at Target Field. Oakland wins this one. They are eight games back in the West. The Halos will remain ten and a half back. Trevor Cahill would pick up his 15th win. Jared Weaver on the hook for his 11th loss. 0-2. Outside, one ball, two strikes. Cal remains with a ball and two strikes. Rajay Davis watching that bag of chips float in the wind. Willis takes a cold strike three. There are two outs. Painted that fastball right on the outside corner. Halo's down to the last out here tonight. Jeopardy of dropping the first two of this series. Napoli takes a strike on the outside corner. Napoli jawing with Mike Kalinske didn't like that pitch. Now somebody giving it to him from the dugout. On the ground is short. Pennington to Barton. It's a one, two, three, ninth, and the A's have taken game two. By the final of three to one, Trevor Cahill picks up the win while Jared Weaver, the hard luck loser, just the offensive support just not there. Boy, and the opportunity in that first inning, first and second, no outs, the spin move 
by Cahill to get Kayaspo going on the 3-2 count really changed the way this game was played. He didn't have command of his fastball throughout the entire game, Cahill, with six walks. He did him, was able to make some key pitches at the right time, and of course, Jared threw the ball very well himself once again. Seven solid innings, only three earned runs allowed. Okay, he'll picks up his 15th win. Jared Weaver takes the loss. He's now 11 11. And Andrew Bailey takes the loss, or the picks up the save, I should say, his 37th of the year. Again, the final Oakland wins it 3 to 1. Stick around for a complete wrap up of today's game with Michael Eves and Jose Moda. Angels Live is